What is going on, bro? Welcome to the video. Unfortunately, the Tesla is still at the body shop getting repaired from that disaster I showed you guys last video. So it's time to take out the OG Audi and get it looking fresh and clean. And I was also planning on performing some upgrades. Like, check this out. I got this super dope black honeycomb grill to replace that one. And I was like, oh, all I gotta do is pop it out pop it back in but then I started looking at the instructions and it's like you got to get the car up on jacks and you got to take the wheels off and you got to take the bumper off and I was like if I try and do this I'm gonna be straight driving the Audi around town with no bumper on it I, I gotta I gotta find a professional to get this done Anyway, it's been two months now, almost two months since we moved to Houston. And since we've arrived here, we've been making a big effort to meet a lot of new people. And like most of the people we met have been super cool. But earlier this week, there was one dude I met who he kind of reminded me of my old self in the sense that he was doing a few awkward things during the conversation that like immediately made me recognize this guy is not confident in himself. He's very insecure right now. So today I want to tell y'all about a few changes I made to my conversational tactics that have helped me stop feeling intimidated or insecure during conversation and have really allowed me just to be calm and confident no matter who I'm talking to. So fun little fact for y'all, back in college I was actually on the Boston University snowboarding team and I had one really good friend on the team but after one semester he decided to transfer schools, I think he went down to like New Orleans. And after that, whenever I'd show up to one of the snowboarding parties, like we had a lot of those, if I didn't immediately get invited to play in like a drinking game, like if I didn't immediately feel accepted into the group, then in my head, I would give up and I'd be like, well, tonight's gonna suck. I'm just gonna go into the corner, drink a bunch of beers by myself. And if anything, I'm gonna talk to one of these other miserable dudes in the corner who's doing the same thing as me. And that's pretty much how it was for me whenever I was in a group setting. Like obviously if I was with people I was really cool with and some good friends, I'd be all right. But if I was with a new group of people and I wasn't like actively talking to one of the girls in the group or one of the, the cool guys who was like a leader of the group, I'd feel isolated. I'd be like, oh shit, like everyone probably thinks I'm a loser now. People, uh, I'm losing social value just sitting here not talking to someone cool. So there's a couple things I've changed. First of all, I've realized that even if I'm not actively, you know, participating in the drinking game or I'm not the center of attention, it's not like everyone else is focusing on, oh my God, where's David? What a loser. Where's he at? It's like, no, people are focusing on what they're doing. So during that time, I'm not stressing out. I'm just talking to other people who aren't in the group or maybe I'm just you know enjoying the music I'm not putting any stress in myself but more importantly is what I like to call uh, divide and conquer all right so check it out I've told y'all that you know the main place that I've met girls in the past is at the gym and a big part of that is that when I join a new gym I make an effort to meet the other members there meet the personal trainers meet the front desk people because now I'm walking in I'm like yo what's going on hey what's up hey what's up and I just feel a lot more confident and comfortable in that environment so when I have the opportunity to approach a girl it's not a big deal and I have a lot of friends who do this at bars and nightclubs they go to the same club they meet the bouncers they meet the bartenders and they feel at home there well you can apply this this same trick when you're entering a new social circle you can't just expect to show up and have everybody like you and think you're the king like that's not realistic but what you can do is make effort when you see someone who's by themselves they're not part of the group you know go over and talk to them there it's a lot easier to build rapport with people one-on-one -on -one, and that's what I do you know I'll find time to single each person out and get to know them talk with them because now when you know, you know, 50% of the people in the group instead of 10%, you're just naturally gonna feel a lot more confident. You know people are gonna like you more and everything's gonna be easier after that. Y'all already know what it is. It's breakfast taco time. We got two breakfast tacos, steak fajita taco, chicken barbecue taco, some sauces, and uh, this is Tiege Hanley AM Facial Moisturizer. Tacos and Tiege Hanley. Honestly, that's a great combination, man. And I forgot to moisturize this morning. So let's go ahead and partner with Tiege Hanley to be the sponsor of today's video. Tiege Hanley is straight up the best skincare system out there for dudes like you and me because 
it is uncomplicated. It's simple, it's easy to use, it works. And if you sign up, you're gonna get a box just like this that contains a variety of different creams and lotions they've formulated specifically to work together and give you clear, healthy skin. This just makes you look better. And when you look better, man, that's a big confidence boost. So for example, you're gonna get that morning moisturizer I was telling you about. You're also gonna get their bedtime moisturizer. You're gonna get a daily face wash. I use this every day. And you're gonna get a whole lot more. And this is not some cheap bottom shelf shit. Like they use top of the line ingredients like collagen and eucalyptus, which would normally cost a lot. But because T. Shanley sells directly to the consumer, they can offer it for a super affordable price. And because they're sponsoring today's video, if you click that first link in the description, you're gonna get an even better deal on your first box of T. Shanley. And they're even throwing in a free toiletry bag what are you waiting for bro click that link so about three four years ago me and the homie dave we took a trip to san diego this was like the beginning of the youtube days we actually filmed a few youtube videos there and one of them i like broke my broke my nose surfing but the point is one night we were going out and like dave had a friend of a friend come out with us and he came over he was talking to me he seemed like a cool dude but then immediately when it turned into a group environment like Dave got done getting ready Dave had another buddy come through this dude just spent all night trying to one-up everybody like me and Dave mentioned oh we went to this really cool you know nightclub in LA uh, last year and he's like oh man I know all the nightclubs in LA you know I, I get into all of them I'm such like a smooth talker with the bouncers you know when I show up I never have to wait in line now, I'm always in there now this is not something that I personally used to do, and I'm not bragging, like I used to be as insecure as they come, but I see other guys doing this shit all the time. Like we've had contractors come through our house and be like, oh wow, this is a nice house. Let me show you photos of my house. It's really nice. It's a lot nicer than yours. Like they're not saying that, but they mean that. So if you're someone who does this, you have to realize all you're doing is trying to prove yourself to other people because you want them to like you and respect you more, but it's not gonna work out. When you do this to someone confident, they're just gonna be annoyed by it. Like now when people do this to me, I'm just like, oh man, I really don't wanna hear this person try and prove themselves to me all night. I'm gonna go talk to someone else. And if you do this and you try and one up somebody who's not confident, that's when you get into a good old fashioned dick measuring contest about who slept with more girls or who has a nicer car. And this shit is toxic to your confidence because it essentially programs your mind to continue trying to prove yourself and seek validation from other people. And I want you to be careful because even if you don't one up other people, you might be one downing them. So maybe you have a friend who gets a girlfriend and then you're like, bro, why would you want a girlfriend? Aren't you afraid she's gonna cheat on you? Or maybe he hooks up with a girl and you're like, yo, you really hooked up with her? She's kind of gross, man. She's, she slept with a lot of guys. Like essentially what you're doing is because you're not capable of getting what they have, you're trying to make them feel like they shouldn't even want it in the first place. You know, maybe someone gets a new car and you're like, yo, why would you spend your money on that nice car? That's a terrible financial decision when really you just couldn't afford that car. So you're trying to make yourself feel better. I know it seems like the opposite of one-upping other people, but with both of these things, you're focused on comparing yourself or what you have to what someone else has. And that's just a low confidence mindset. Like if someone else accomplishes something or gets something cool, you should be like, that's awesome, bro. I'm happy for you. And maybe you ask yourself, you know, what steps can I take to get there too? Gains, bro. Workout complete, and I got a question for y'all. Do you prefer working out at night or in the morning? Because like, I definitely get better workouts at night. I think it's because I have everything done for the day and I can just fully get lost in the workout. But at the same time, I have the caffeine, I have the pre-workout, and as y'all can see, I'm talking really fast and I don't sleep as well. Absolutely not. I like to wake up, get a killer workout in, and then have the rest of my day to just crush it. Yeah, but also, you're crazy. Do I sound any better, bro? I've been getting comments that when I when I film in the office, it looks dope, but it's like, bro, you sound like shit. What's wrong with the acoustics in your room? So I got some acoustic sound panels in this corner and that corner. I still need to get a few more for this corner here and that corner there. But but just talking and listening to myself talk, 
and it sounds a lot better. Now, even in my days of my absolute lowest, lowest, lowest confidence, I still sometimes could have, you know, organic, natural conversations with girls or with guys who are more successful than me, but, but I would always trip up whenever there was a silence. You know, in my head, I'd be like, oh man, it's been like two seconds, three seconds, and every second would seem like 10 minutes, right? And then I'd be like, I need to say something. The other person's probably getting uncomfortable. The other person is probably thinking I'm a loser the longer I can't think of something to say. And then I would just like, you know, blurt something stupid out. Like, anyway, what are your plans for this weekend? And I'm just going to straight up interview mode. Now, at some point I became aware that I was doing this and that it was hurting my conversations a lot. And then I thought about it and I came up with this idea, right? If silence seems awkward, you're always gonna feel pressured to fill the silence. But if you were truly confident socially, you'd be okay with the silence. So if you had two, you know, fully confident people and there was a silence, neither would rush to fill it. They would just think about something meaningful to say. But if you have someone who's confident and someone who's not as confident, inevitably that less confident person is always going to assume the burden of conversation and they're always gonna say something first. And when I had this realization, I was a little bit further along my journey in life. I was deep into gaming at the time. I was going on like three or four dates per week. So before every date, I started to challenge myself. All right, whenever there's a silence in conversation, I'm gonna sit back, take a deep breath, and just observe how the girl reacts. And almost every single time, man, the girl would quickly assume the burden of conversation. She would be a lot more invested in the conversation from that point forward, be asking a lot more questions about me. And like, obviously that made me feel more confident and made things go a lot more smoothly. And just to be clear, I'm not recommending you turn into some psychopath who just never says anything when there's a silence and you just wait for the other person. I'm saying take the pressure off of yourself. When you notice that silence, <sighs> exhale. If you have a drink, take a sip of the drink. Relax and ask yourself, you know, what's a good direction for me to take this conversation? And when you think of the right question or topic, introduce that topic if the person hasn't said anything by then. And this is going to allow you to really, you know, consciously be in control of the conversation rather than just anxiously, nervously re reacting when you sense any little silence. Hey bro, hey buddy, how's it going in that cone of yours? It's going okay? So Rolo was successfully neutered, but it's only been a few days and he's still kind of loopy from the drug. So he just like walks around the house and just like stares at the floor and stuff, it's kind of funny. But we're wrapping the day up with some wings right here. These look good, I mean, these look like they could give Julia's buffalo chicken a run for its money. No, they don't. Speaking of Julia's buffalo chicken, which was a 9.5 out of 10 last time, which is very high rating. You guys are like, bro, you've never rated anything a 10 out of 10 on the channel. I think some of you guys forget. Last summer, I think it was summer, this movie was released. Hobbs and Shaw with The Rock and Jason Statham. Statham. Statham, a crazy combination. I'm, I'm giving it something I've never done before on this channel. 10 out of 10. Oh, I was going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Oh, no, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Hell no, I didn't think it was that good. The only 10 out of 10 ever given on this channel and I do not take it back. We actually just bought it. I gotta own it if it's a 10 out of 10. If you're still watching the video though, I appreciate you so much. Hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, go ahead, click subscribe, and turn notifications on because I drop two new videos every single week and you don't wanna miss them. I will talk to all of y'all in the next video. Stay beastly.